south of its Iron Bear town, mostly ruins. There used to be squatters, but the rangers stomped them a few years back. Still, that area is probably thick with ranger patrols. She drew a great big capital backwards F above the central rectangle. This is the breakwater and pier. Not sure how much cover and stuff there is. Then she drew a lozenge shape at the bottom of the lower arm of the F. And this is the Celestia. The Steel Rangers have made it their fortress in Hoovington. It's the big reason the Reapers haven't tried an attack before. No pony knows if the big guns work. No pony wants to find out what it'll take, if they do work, to get Crunchy Carrots to use up any ammunition for them. Finally, underneath the square, she drew a circle. This used to be the headquarters of the base. Big old building. Guess it's used to be a bunch of offices. But... She drew another circle. This one made of a dotted line. To the right of the headquarters. This is the Iron Mare Crater. The bomb missed the base outright. But you know what they say. It's only... Uh, time, close matters, is... Horseshoes, grenades, and balefire bombs. They really say that? Gloria asked with a confused frown. Spoken like a pony who's never gotten a ringer. Rampage chuckled. Balefire bombs ring? I wave my hoof. Okay, so if we can get through the headquarters building, then through the factory, we should be able to find some pony to set up a meeting. Maybe Stronghoof, if he survived. And it'd be hard for me to think of any pony who could kill that stallion. I smell a whole lot of make-it-up-as-we-go coming off this plan, Glory said with a resigned sigh. Of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fun. I said with a smile. I looked at Rampage, who was looking at the newspaper clipping. You want me to hold on to that for you? She jumped, looking back at me and then nodded once. I carefully removed the picture from the frame and slid it into my saddlebags. I'd keep it safe. It was one of the few things I could do for her. We all took a few minutes to rinse off the grime and grit from the battle. Already I was missing the last time I had a wondrous hot water cascading over me with a mare scrubbing my flanks. An unoccupied bathtub would be wonderful too. I never appreciated how a hot shower was the hallmark of civilization. It seemed so simple, but right now I could go for a week-long soak. Which would give me a few more weeks to get stuff done before I died. Tick, tock, tick. As we set off, I imagined the taint battling with my cells, slowly advancing and encroaching on health tissue, building up bases and fortifying tumors, staging raids and assaulting my intact organs, till it completely controlled the territory of my body. I could swear I felt little explosions inside when I moved wrong. Twings of gunfire, a general burning in my rear leg like flamers at work. Every now and then I imagined a bomb inside me going off that would make me pause and gasp. Well, you were the one running way round, but I couldn't run. I was so scared. All those mean ranger ponies were laughing about how they just cut off my pit buck and figured out how to disarm this big old bomb. Then this purple and green filly walked in, and they seemed to think she was one of my friends or something and went to grab her. Well, she opened up her mouth wide, and she bit his leg off. And then the other one started to shoot her, but the bullets, they bounced right off of her. Then she breathed fire at him green fire. Scott looked up at us. I'm not making it up. I smiled as I clattered along beside her. I didn't say you were, Scotch. You had a smile, she said sullenly. Smile? That I don't believe you, but I won't say so. Smile, she said crossly, and looked at Rampage. You believe me, don't you? There was more in her tone and expression than just that. She might as well have been asking, You're not angry with me, are you? Or, You're not going to leave again, are you? Rampage looked at her for a long moment, then gave a crooked little smile. 
Sure, kid. I know Gorgon. Freakiest damn pony ever saw. And her smile slowly faded away. And one of the nicest. I recalled him turning my friends to stone, but kept my silence. Who hired him to uh, up production at the mine? I asked as we trot along. We were making our way north, more or less trying to keep off the streets and away from watching skies. We may have killed off a bunch of Brass's flock, but I didn't think we'd gotten all of them. I mean, it seemed pretty sudden from what I recalled. Don't know. Apparently some buyer wanted every last gem they could draw out of the mine. Basically took it over. Funny because normally those gems would have been converted into flamer fuel or gem cartridges, but they were going somewhere else. I frowned, my head throbbing. I know that look, Peter Anyone said as he limped up beside me. What are you thinking, Blackjack? Just, uh, everything is happening now. I get EC-1101 out of 99, Gorgon gets sent to my gems, every pony starts killing every pony else. What triggered it? What's behind it? Who wants the gems so much, and why? I pointed in the general direction of the battle. And that monster pony said that someone was really pushing Sanguine to get EC-1101. So why now? Rampage looked at me. No offense, but why not? Things are finally organized enough for groups of ponies to tear each other apart. But that's part of it, too. The companions came out east and just happened to weed out all the dozens of tribes so that they could get five competing organizations. And one of the companions goes up to the Enclave and gets involved, too, and forms the VC. I can't believe it's all a coincidence. It's like there's something, something sweeping all this along. And it's not just Hoofington. Why does the Stable Dweller stake everything up till now? Why has Red Eye come to power in Philadelphia now? Why is everything happening... Now, maybe it is all just big one coincidence, Glory suggested. I mean, it's all circumstantial. She was probably right, but I couldn't help but feel the niggling sensation that all this was connected, and the things that happened 200 years ago were happening now. I looked back at Lacuna trailing behind us as Glory and P21 began arguing over coincidence versus pattern. Well, that was fine. I'd raised the questions, so now the smart ponies could argue over it. I dropped back and gave Lacuna a little nudge. How are you feeling? The goddess was hurt. Very badly. I do not think unity has ever been so threatened before. She shivered. She has cut me off as completely as she can. I have been forsaken. I can hear the others. But next time I am threatened, she will let me die. She will not endanger everything just for me. I'm sorry, I said with a sigh. I guess. I guess you and the goddess would have been better off if you never met me. Why do you say that? Lacuna said with a ghost of a smile. You are, in many ways, the most fascinating pony the goddess has ever encountered. Tenacity, foolishness, brave and cowardly, painfully devoted to those in need. Had ponies like you lived two centuries ago, perhaps things may have been different. At the very least, you have inspired the goddess to a radical plan. Radical. Yes. The goddess knows a dire enemy is coming to us. We will treat with her. Seek to use her rather than destroy her outright. Allow her to achieve mutual goals in the hopes that our great biological problem can be addressed. That sounds dangerous. What if she betrays you? That is a great concern. But as you pointed out, two centuries of wasteland has accomplished little. Two centuries of Watcher and the Enclave haven't accomplished much either, I thought. We do not know if this will work. But we are becoming increasingly aware that old methods are not succeeding. Things must change one way or another. Are you really cut off forever? I asked a concern, worried about what it meant for her. So the goddess says... But she said so before. Twilight is terribly cautious about Hoofington, enervation, and your own concerns. Lacuna gave a mysterious little smile. 
I have faith that she'll one day return to me. I've lost goddesses before. There was an odd thing to say, but when she mentioned that name, I gave a half smile. Is she... is she really in there? It's complicated, she said with another faint smile. It's like music. The goddess is the conductor, and we are her orchestra. She selects the music, and we must play the notes. Some of us play well, some softly, some with amazing skill. Twilight is one such magician, perhaps the best in the orchestra, but the goddess still picks the music, and I think that she is glad to yield the decisions to the goddess. The chances of her... the choices of her time as ministry mayor were not easy on her. It was a time of much pain and regret. Funny how she wants to add us to her band, I muttered dryly. We once thought to make it optional, but the process was too slow and painful. The acolytes of unity were too vulnerable to the predators of the wasteland. And it seemed somewhat cruel to leave the poor and ignorant and fearful to die when they could be saved in unity. Once they were part of us, they would know it was a better state. She gave a tiny shrug. It is what a matter of perspective. For us, it would be monstrous not to offer unity to all. I didn't think about it like that. Was it like that for you? She gave a soft smile. I do not know. I didn't go through unity. She replied, and I kicked myself. It was so hard to remember that she wasn't actually a pony, that she was just a collection of thoughts and regrets. I have memories, though. A cup of golden fluid, vats of rainbow lights, catwalks. Why catwalks? She sighed and shivered slightly, then falling into a great dark filled with whispers and motes of light. And then? Learning to play. Some fight it. But I think on some fundamental level we all have a longing for harmony. Harmony, huh? I looked in the direction of all the smoke. Somehow it doesn't seem like Hoofington knows how to play along.